Today will be part 73 in the series, Scriptures Often Ignored, and today will be a continuation of what we talked about and went over last week with the Hebrew Yaudiath 101, and today we're going to be doing and focusing more on the actual language and how to pronounce certain words as well as an introductory on certain words and how they are to be pronounced. And because this is a truth network, we use the restored names of the Father Yahua and the restored name of the Son Yahu read in the Paleo Hebrew from right to left. We also use the restored title for our father, Alua, which means Almighty One, Almighty Yahuwah is singular according to Debarium, Deuteronomy 6.4, and Strong's H433. Now, if you already have not, I highly recommend you watch part one of the video to get a better understanding of the spelling, the letters, the alphabet itself, and the pronunciation of each of the letters and the words, because we're going to be going off of that. So once again, if you have not already, please watch part one of the video to get a better understanding, because we will be going a little bit faster in this video. But before we get started, I wanted to just go over the alphabet once again in and the pronunciations of each of the letters. Now, like we already talked about in part one, there are 22 letters to the Yaudia through the Hebrew alphabet. This is how it looks in the Paleo, and this is how it looks in the modern, as it's commonly known as today. And this is the pronunciation, as it's commonly known. Pictographically, you see the all or the olive, which represents the ox head, and it makes the A sound. Then we have the both, which makes the B sound right here, which represents house or being inside. We also have the gamal or as they call it the gimel in the modern which makes the g sound and represents a foot or a camel we also know and talked about in the yaudiath language it's very pictographically and words actually mean things and each of the letter actually has a meaning then we have the fourth letter right here which is the doll or the dalit as it's commonly known which represents a door and it makes the d sound then we have right here the fifth letter the hey which makes the ah sound and is a vowel right here or the h sound right here this is how it looks in the modern the sixth letter is the oo or what they commonly know as the vav in the modern but it actually makes the oo sound and represents a nail as you can see right here then we have zayan or zayin as it's commonly known as the modern hebrew which makes the z sound and is represented with the weapon then we have the ket or as they commonly know it in the hebrew in the modern one is Het, and we talked about the pronunciation, how it's just cot and makes the K or H sound interchangeably and represents the wall of separation. We have the yod right here, which makes the Y sound, as you can see right here, and represents a hand. This represents to be surrounding by. And then we have the cop right here, which makes the K sound and represents a palm of hand, or to open, to reveal, and you can see right here in the modern. Then we go to the twelfth letter, which is the lam, or the lamad, which makes the L sound and represents teaching, or leader, or staff. And then we have the mom right here, which represents water and looks like the waves of waters. And you can see it right here in the modern. It makes the M sound. The noon right here represents seed, life, or fish and makes the N sound kaya, which is life. And then we have samak right here, which is the staff or to support the staff or to prop, which makes the S sound. The ayan right here or the ayin as it's commonly known, which looks like an I or I see experience and makes the A sound. Then we have the pa or the pe, which means mouth, word or speak, which makes the P sound. We also have the tsad, which makes the TZ sound, which looks like a fish hook actually and then we have the coop or the cop as it's commonly known which makes the Q sound which represents behind or sun on horizon we have the rush right here which represents the chief or first and it makes the R sound we have the Sean right here which looks like teeth which also means to consume or destroy and it actually makes the sh sound and then the last letter right here it actually makes the th sound which is the thu or the top as it's commonly known which means mark sign or covenant which is the last letter of the alphabet we also talked about in many videos how each of these letters right here they also have numerical values to them and we also talked about the five vowels that are in them which is the olive right here this is a vowel this is a vowel right here, the hey, 
the u and also the tenth letter the yod right here and also to the ayan right here these are all the vowels and these make up the five vowels of the yaudith language and we also talked about and like you're going to see in this video too that the yaudith language the language that's spoken in the paleo hebrew this one right here this language is totally different than what the jewish people are speaking today or the so-called modern hebrew they're completely two separate languages and you're going to see that in just a moment to come Another important thing to note, as we also noted in the first video before, is that there are no letters E, F, I, J, O, V, or W in the Yaudith language. These sounds are achieved by adding so-called vowel points or various dots and dashes, so the Nikud, to the Yaudith Hebrew letters, as we also talked about, adding and taking away. And we also noted the importance how the letters J, E, W, the people who call themselves Jews, those letters are not even in the original Yaudith alphabet or tongue. So how could they be known as that? Could they be imposters according to scripture? Well, Revelation Kazun chapter 2 verses 9 and chapter 3 verses 9 tells us exactly who they are. But like I said, we went over that more in detail in the first video in part 1. But now we're going to be talking more about the pronunciation of introductory words. And so now what we're going to do is cover a basic pronunciation of basic words and words that you definitely need to know. And we're going to be talking more about intro words or 20 words indeed. Now some of these words we've actually talked about before, but once again we're going to go over them and they're going to comprise of different names nouns, verbs, and other words that you definitely need to know to really get a basic Hebraic or Yaudith understanding of it. And we're also going to be talking about this word too. But right now we're going to start with and I also would like to note that in the list below, bolded words are of pagan origin, which we'll see later on. And the Strong's number is in the parentheses listed. And we're actually going to go to each one so you can see it yourself and so that we can get a basic understanding of the pronunciation. And we're going to go one by one. Now, of course, I did a video on what is the name of the Father and the Son last year. And I'm actually going to link it in the description box below. But you're going to see and get an understanding of the pronunciation here. And so the first word that we're going to go over is the name of our father, which is Yahua, and this is the definition that they give you. But of course, we covered this word in part one, two, and what it really means. Now, as you can see right here, this is what we're going to turn our attention to. You see that it uses four characters, and this is the way that we're able to know what it means in the Yaudith and how to pronounce it and get an understanding. But we see right here, it means the Yod right there. That's the Yod. It has the head right here in two different places so we know it has the same pronunciation the ah and it has the oo right here so the yod hey oo hey so we know this makes the y sound this makes the a h sound this makes the oo sound and this makes the a h sound so when you put it together you get ya like right here these two letters is ya oo or ya oo so ya oo so when you put it together you get ya oo now there's something very interesting and suspicious indeed when we look at the name of the sun because they tell us that the name of the sun in Strong's is H3091. Now we pronounce it as Yahusha, but you see how they pronounce it. And as we've talked about in part one, the name of Joshua and the name of our Messiah, they have the exact same name in the Yaudith Hebrew language. So then why in the world do they have two different names in the English? We know there's an agenda being played here indeed just like there's even an agenda on this list right here because see notice how there are six characters right here you have the yod you have the hey you have the u right here which is commonly known as vav so you put these three together and you get the ya u which you see in a lot of the names of the prophets of old which we're also going to be going over you have the shan right here which makes the sh sound but then you have an extra u right here and the ayan right here so notice how there are six characters here but when you take a look at the occurrences it only has five letters right here it does not have this extra ooh there are only five of them right there so why are they adding an extra ooh right here 
See how they have six letters up here with all the vowel pointing? And that's another thing when it comes to the Yaudia, there is no vowel pointing. So we disregard all of the vowel pointing because we know that's part of the agenda too. But see the agenda of these concordances, six different letters. But on here, there are five right here. As you can see in the book of Exodus or Shemuth, there are five. You see five letters right here, not the six. You do not see that extra U right there. And if we keep going all the way down, down, it's the same thing, five letters, five letters, five letters, not the six that it shows up here, not the extra U. So let's just keep going. The book of Numbers, you see it once again right here. You see it once again right here. And this U that's in front of it means and and denotes the word and just so that you know. But I just wanted to show you the agenda that they have in mind because they do not want you to know the truth about the names in the restored language. See how it has five characters right here. See how it has five characters again right here, which is the name of Joshua as it's commonly known in English, but he has the same name as the name of our Messiah. Once again, the five characters right there, even in the book of Deuteronomy. And the only two places, and we've talked about this in what is the name of the Father and the Son, the only two places that you see the Shua being used with the six characters is right here in Debarium or Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 21. And then Judges chapter 2, verses 7. So if you actually look at Strong's and actually scroll down the list where you actually see the 218 occurrences where Yahusha's name actually is in Scripture, you see that only two places it has this extra U right here, but all the other places, all the other 216 occurrences only have the five letters that are listed right here as you see. And you can try this on your own time and you'll see the exact same thing for yourself. So if this is true and you see this 216 times and you only see this two times, why do they have this listed then right here? Could it be because they're hiding the truth from you? Of course they are and have been for how many hundreds if not thousands of years. But the truth is finally being revealed to you today because this is his name right here as seen over 216 times throughout scripture or precisely 216 times throughout the so-called Old Testament I should say and the only other two places that you see it is like I said in Debarium Deuteronomy 321 and Judges 2 7 that have to do with crying out but we know that Yahusha's name means Yahuwah is salvation and it contains the Sha root right here which is the root meaning salvation to save and when it comes to pronunciation, we know it's Yahusha because it has the Yod right here, the Ah or the He, the U, the Shan, which makes the SH sound, and then the Ayan, which makes the A sound. So when you put it all together, you just get Yahusha. Another witness to the father's name that we also went over and what is the name of the father and the son and the way to know is Judah's name or what's commonly known as Judah in Strong's H3063, which is Yahuda. Of course, they have an E right here, but we know it's Yahu, and we know that because this is the Yod, this is the A right here or the He, and notice how they have the same letter right here. So just like this is the AH, this also should be an AH2, and this is the U. And they got that right, actually, with the U. And then this is the doll or the Dalit, which is the door. And we know this is the door to finding Yahuwah's name because you get Yahuda. Well, if you take away the Dalit and the door, you get the name of Yahuwah without the D to get Yahuwah. But when you have the Dalit here for Judah, you get Yahuda. This is just a basic understanding of how we're able to know the name of our father Yahua and the name of the son as Yahusha and also with Yahuda for Judah. When you take away the D, you get the name of the father Yahua and notice how it has the Yah, Yahu in his name. And we also talked about that in plenty of videos before.
But another thing I wanted to point out is the restored name of the language because yes, the language should not be called Hebrew because the word Hebrew or the word Abaria actually means crossed over or someone who has crossed over. But the actual name of the language is Yaudiath and you can find this in Strong's H3066 and we're going to go there so you can see it for yourself. But here's an example. Just like in Ethiopia, the people are commonly known as as Ethiopian, but they do not speak the language Ethiopian. They speak Amharic or whatever respective language that they speak in their respective languages. And actually, back then, the people were not known as Hebrew, but rather they were known as Yaudium, which means Jews, plural. And here we are at Strong's H3066, where we actually get the word Yaudiath, which is the name of the language. As you can see, it has the Yau right here, and then the Dalit right here, just like in Yauda. But then we have another Yod right here, and then the Thu to get Yaudiath. And so when you put all of the six letters together, you actually get the word Yaudiath or Yaudiath, which of course they commonly refer to it as Judean. And we're going to be talking about this word too. It has six occurrences in scripture itself. And again, right here, it's listed even as what? The language of Judah, the language of Yauda, as you even see in 2 Kings chapter 18, where it says in the Jews language, in the Jews language or the language of the Yaudium. And even this word right here, which means Jewish, according to them, actually it means Yaudium or Yaudia, which is the correct way to refer to the Hebrew people, so-called Hebrews, as Yaudium or Yaudia, because here we have that extra Yud. So when you take off the Yaudith, when you take off the TH or the Thu, you just get Yaudia. And also in the Yaudith language, the Yod and the Mom at the end of letters, the Yum, is plural, as you're going to to see later on so we know that the s for plural is yaudium and this is the correct restored way of referring to the people of the scriptures and so now we're going to continue when it comes to the different pronunciation of names verbs and nouns as we also talked about and did in part one but now we're going to expand upon that and we're going to start with names of a few of the people in scripture who are listed in order to be able to pronounce their words and like i said you can try this with any word in the yaudiath language you can try the same principle and same technique and what you'll see and find out is how easy it really is to pronounce certain words. And you'll also see how the restored language is different than so-called Hebrew and Yiddish, Babylonian Yiddish that's being promoted today by the Jewish people. And we're going to start with Isaiah, Yashayahu, Jeremiah, Yarmyahu, and Hosea, Husha. And this is where you can find it in the Strong's Concordance. We're just going to start with these three for today. And like we also talked about before in previous videos, the names Isaiah and Hosea in the Yaudiath language also bear witness to our Messiah Yahusha containing the Sha root being Yahusha and not Yahushua. And so when it comes to Isaiah and Strong's H3470, we have Yahshayahu, but see right here they give five characters, but note over here how the extra U is right there, so it's actually six characters right here. Notice these things. I'm telling you, there's been a lot of agendas going on, but we see the six characters. We have the Yod right here, which makes the Y sound, the Shan, which makes the SH sound, the Ayan, the A sound right there, and then the Yahu at the end with the Yod, that the hey and the u so when we put it together we simply get yashayau yashayau and the same thing is true with Jeremiah's name in the Yaudiath language, Yarm Yau in Strong's H3414 right here, which means Jeremiah or Yarm Yau. See, they have five characters right here, but then they have six characters with the extra U added in some places. But then in other places, they only have five characters right there in the actual name, as you can see. So when you piece it together, you have the Yod right here, which makes the Y sound, the Rosh, which makes the R sound, the Mom, which makes the M sound, and then the Ya'u right here, the Yod, the He, and the U. So when you put it together, you get Yaram Ya'u, Yaram Ya'u. 
And like I said, this technique works with any word that you're trying to figure out and understand in the Yaudith language when it comes to the pronunciation. And we're going to be doing more examples of that in the video to come. We also have the name Hosea in the English, but we know that it's actually one letter off from the name of our Messiah. Again, we have the Sha root right here, which bears witness to Yahusha's name. And we see that when it comes to Husha's name right here, the Yad is the only thing that's missing to get the name of our Messiah, Yahusha, but his name contains four characters, the He, the U, the Shan, and the Ayan to get Ausha, Husha. And if we just place the Yod right here, we get the Y sound to get Yahusha, the name of Joshua, and our Messiah. And like we also talked about in videos before, note how most of the names of the prophets of old, they have Yah, Yahu in their names, even in the English, Jeremiah, Obadiah, the word hallelujah means praise be to Yah. You even see that in Psalm 68 verse 4, Yah, Yahu. The song Kumbaya, come by here, ya. So you see it all over. And like I always talk about in all my videos and emphasize, names are very important. And so now we're going to be going over some more foundational words to get a better understanding of the pronunciation of the Yaudiath language. And like I said, notice the two differences in the languages because they try to tell you in the modern Hebrew with this word here in Strong's H8426, the word that means thanks or thanksgiving, that it's toda. But when you actually look at it and break it down, it contains four characters. The first one is the tav, as it's commonly known, or the thu, which makes the th sound the next one is the oo or what they call the vav the next one is the doll or dalit which makes the d sound and then the ah or the hey right here and we see the uda just like in yauda but when we put it together we actually get fuda 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 we see the same thing that's being done even in Strong's H8451 in the word as they call it Torah, but notice how the only difference, again, we ignore the vowel points, but the only difference in change is that it goes from a D, a Dalit, to a Rosh, which is an R, and this word means instruction or law, direction. We have, again, the four characters, the Thu right here, the U, the Rosh, and then the He or the A, ah. so when you put it together, you get Thu Ra. Thura. So like we just went over and talked about, thanks means thuda or pronounced thuda as we saw in Strong's H8426 in the word Torah as it's commonly known is thura, which means law and instruction. It means and is pronounced thura according to Strong's H8451 and 8452. Now, we actually talked about this in this week's Living Righteously series when it comes to expectation and cord and the word wait. And we talked about kuwa or thakua, and we also talked about the pronunciation, and we'll once again go over it. But what you'll start to see is that the word expectation also appears in other words too, like this word yakal and shabar, and we're going to go over all of these ones right now. And again, note the differences between the two languages, between the restored language and the so-called modern Hebrew, because they pronounce it here in Strong's H6960, kava, which means to wait. But when we actually look at it, we know this makes the ku sound right here, or the q sound, and then the ua right here, just like in the name of our father, yaua, when you put these three letters together, you get the q, the u, and then the a right here to get kua, kua. And then even worse is this pronunciation right here because then they say it's tikva. So how it went from kava to tikva, I'm not even sure. But that's what they claim for this word, which means cord or expectation as we went over. But see, notice how it has the same root right here, the kua right there, as you can see. But then right here, it has the extra letter right here, which is the tav or the thu, which is the th. So when you put all the four characters together, you get the th right here for the Thu, the Q right here for the cop, and then the U, and then the A for the Kua or Thakua. 
And notice how the only thing you're doing, the only difference from the word we just saw before is you're adding this letter right here. You're adding the TH right in front of it, but you still get the KUA right here from the original word that we just went over. Now here's another word that has to do with expectation, which also can do with trying or examining, as you see right here. Now they pronounce it as sabar in H7663, but when we look at the shan right here, we know that this makes the SH sound, just like in the name of our Messiah, Yahusha. So when you put all these three words together, you get shabar, or the shan, the bath, and then the rosh, and we know that the shan makes the sh sound, the bath makes the b sound, and the rosh makes the r sound, which gets shabar. Another word that they actually somewhat get correct is this one in Strong's H3176, which is yakal, and it means to wait, await, or to have expectancy and waiting, as we also talked about in our Living Righteously. But you see it has three characters, the yod right here, which makes the y sound, and then the kat, which can be used as the K sound or the CH interchangeably, and then the lam right here, which makes the, the L sound. And when you put it together, you get yakal, yakal. And going back to our first word, shabar, which means expectation or examining to try, we see right here that it's shabar right here. But what happens if you replace this first letter right here with the dalit or the doll? What word do you get next? The next word that you get actually is dabar then, which means speech or word and has over 1400 occurrences in scripture. And you see that it means the word word right here. And it has the same, the three letters it has the same bath and rosh as the other word shabar, but the difference now is we're placing a dalit right here to get the D sound, the bath to keep the B sound, and the rosh to get the R sound to get the words dabar. And as you can see, it's simply pronounced dabar, just like with this word is pronounced shabar, as you can see with the same two letters right here, only the difference is adding this one right here and changing it up. But you see how it keeps the same amount of sound and is consistent throughout the language. Other foundational words that we're going to be going over include these ones. Now, some of them I've gone over before, but now we're going to actually take care of their actual pronunciation. As you can see, the ones that are listed and highlighted in bold are actually of pagan origin. Now, again, this video is for those who are looking to understand and get an understanding of the Yaudiya Hebrew language and are interested in doing so. No, it is not required for deliverance but knowing the name of the father and the son definitely is but like i said just like sapana yahu or zephaniah chapter 3 verses 8 through 9 tell us yahu will restore unto us a purified tongue but right here we're going over of what's commonly known as heaven the word shamiam or shamiam and strong's h8064 and also the word f-a-i-t-h which means amuna or belief and then esteem which is kabud favor, which is khan, which is the root word, which also makes the word kanan, and then also the word bless, which means barak or baruch, and notice how it has be less in it, that's a play on the English, and then made apart, which means kadash and kadush, all of which we're going to be breaking down right now. And the first one, of course, is Shamiam, Shamayam, right here from Strong's H8064. Now you can see right here it has four characters the Shan right here, which makes the SH sound, the Mom, which makes the M sound, and then the Yod to get the Y sound, and then the extra Mom to get the other M sound, so the double M. So when you put it together, you get Shamiam, Shamayam. The next word that you hear me say a lot is amuna, which means belief too, which is right here from Strong's H530. You have five characters right here. It makes the olive, which makes the A sound actually, the mom, which is the M, the U right here to get the U sound, the noon to get the N, and then the hey to get the AH, as you can see right here. Put it together and you get the word amuna, amuna right here, and it comes from aman which you can get right here from these three letters right here, the olive, the mom, and the noon. The next word is kabud, which means esteem. You see it has the kap right here, which makes the K sound, the bath, which makes the B sound, the U once again to make the U sound, and then the dalit to make the D sound. So when you put all of these four letters together, you get the word kabud.
This is the word right here, which means favor. As you can see right here, it only has two letters of the Yaudiath alphabet. It has the het right here, or the kat, and then the noon right here. And we know this makes a ch or k sound interchangeably. And then this letter right here, which is the noon, which gets the n sound. So when we put it together, we get khan. Khan, which means favor. Another word that we see right here is if you add an additional noon to it to get three letters as opposed to two, you get right here, which is Strong's H2603, which means to beseech. And you get the word Kanan right here because it has the K sound right here and then the two noons right here to get Kanan, Kanan, Kanan when putting it together. And also for clarification purposes, when it comes to the word bless right here, actually Barak is for the past tense right here as you're gonna see. And then the word Baruch is used in the present tense and we're going to be going to their uses and I'm going to show you that in just a moment to come, but I wanted to clarify that and the differences for these two and the letter differences too. Here we are once again at Strong's H1288 to get the word Barak. As you can see right here, there are three characters, and this is the past tense form right here. As you can see, the first letter is the Bath, which is the B, the Rosh, which is the R, and then the Kop right here to get the K right here to get Barak, Barak, Barak. Now when it comes to Baruch, you see how it has the extra U right here to get four characters. So you have the Bath, the Rosh, and then the U right here, and then the Kop right here. And when you place all four of them together, you get the word Baruch, Baruch. Baruch, but if you take this off and just only have three characters like right here, you get the word Barak. So that extra U comes from the letter right here that's added which indicates the present tense, as you can see right here in Barashayath or Genesis chapter 27, verse 29 right here, and also can even indicate two future tense, as seen right here in Debarayim or Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, you will be Baruch or blessed. And then finally, a breakdown of these two words right here. We have Kadash and Kadush, and we're going to be going over this one, Kadush right here, which means made apart in Strong's H6918 right here. As you can see right here, you see it has four characters. So we have the Ku right here, which makes the Q sound, the Dal or the Dalit to get the D sound, the U, and then the Shan to get the SH. And when we put it together, we actually get Kadush which originates from right here, Strong's H6944, Kadash. We have the Q right here, once again, the Dala to get the D sound, and then the Shan to get the SH. And when we put it together, we get Kadash, Kadash, Kadash right here. So like I said, this is just a basic understanding of the words when it comes to the Yaudiath language. And prayerfully, this video helps you too in your own personal studies if you're personally studying the language or even looking to study the language more and the pronunciation of words. And like I said, you can try this with any other word and you'll see that it applies to basically the same words if you just look at the chart and just apply the different pronunciations. But as we even talked about, you'll see how it's two separate languages. And even just like this word here, they pronounce it as Kodesh, but as we just talked about, it's actually Kadash. Now, if you would like me to do this with even more words and to study this with even more words that we've gone over before, please let me know, and I would be more than glad to do that in the description box below. But like I said, prayerfully, this video has been very helpful unto you indeed. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even recommendations on the scriptures, and if you would like more understanding, or if you just have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com. Again, my email is just truthunveiled77, two sevens, not three, 
at gmail.com. Also, if you have any questions regarding scriptures, and if you would like a recommendation of what scriptures that I use and the scriptures that I recommend, also email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com and make sure to put scriptures in the title of the email. If you have any questions about anything else, please be sure to email me. Prayerfully, this lesson was very helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying shalom.